Welcome to Brainstorm MTG. I'm ELD, and this is Fast Effect Double Speed Magic the Gathering. ELD's Time Ball Games in Bellingham, Mass. We have Brian on Eldrazi Post versus Andrew on Agrolome. Uh, two very different Chalice decks. Uh, we'll see which one is able to go over the top here. Uh, Eldrazi Post certainly has the larger creatures. Will Agrolone be able to keep those creatures in check? And Knight of the Reliquary can get pretty big on its own right. Uh, so this we'll just have to see how it goes. Blast Zone for Andrew. A new addition from War of the Spark for Agrolone. Able to recur that card. Very powerful. Grim Monolith for Brian. Potentially some explosive... Incoming turns here, and Sylvan Library off of Mox Diamond for Agrolome. So, looking to pull ahead. On mana. And now an Ugin. Exiling the top card of the library, getting a 2-2 creature, electing not to hit the Sylvan Library. Go ahead and let Andrew attempt to pull ahead on life, perhaps not so worried about the life being spent given the aggressive nature of Eldrazi Post. See if that decision ends up biting him or not. It does feel like a little bit of a risk. One card being kept, another Mox Diamond pitching what looks to be a Caracas. And a Knight of the Reliquary now as a 4-4. So Andrew with Agrolome having the largest threat currently. Another Glimmer Post entering in, giving Brian some additional health. And now what to do? Ugin going to exile or destroy that uh, Knight of the Reliquary? I thought he exiled it, but... I'm going to go ahead and check on the text there. Andrew looking at the top three with his Sylvan. It is destroy. So destroy target permanent. That's one or more colors. So many Mox Diamonds here. Ratchet Bomb would be devastating from Brian. Three lands in the bin. Now a Liliana. Blessing. Both players discarding Chalice. Going into the bin for Andrew, not expecting it to be any good in this matchup. And now Kozilek. I believe that's Kozilek getting some extra cards. Ugin plussing. Now this Liliana not going to have much time left for her with all of these threats on the other side of the board. Sylvan Library. Ready to go to his first main, resolved the Sylvan. He's going to go ahead and Edict. Drop another Lily. Edict again. Grim Monolith. Into Karn, and that is going to do it. Karn, an absolute knockout blow there. Shutting off all three of those Mox Diamonds, annihilating Andrew's mana base. And of course, next turn, that Karn would have been able to go ahead and grab a Mycosynth Lattice, or really whatever he wanted. Uh, Brian, in incredible shape there, had a clock uh, with that Eldrazi as well. So Andrew just in bad shape, and that Karn eliminated all hope. Looks like Punishing Fire, Chalice of the Void, some pretty easy cuts here for Andrew. 
Punishing Fire is really going to pull a ton of weight versus the majority of cards in Brian's list. A lot of larger creatures. And Eldrazi Pose doing what you would expect there, going over the top of Aggro Loam. Yeah, Loam strategies really uh, pretty solid at going after mid rangey decks, uh, punishing bad draws. Uh, it turns games into an absolute slog and wants to win with creatures the old fashioned way. Aggro Loam just makes absolute car wrecks out of games, disabling opponents' key spells with Chalice of the Void, and grinding out with card advantage. Cards like Dark Confidant, Life from the Loam, Liliana. So many ways of uh, forcing card advantage. Liliana's uh, very one-sided, especially when you go Hellbent. You have no cards to be discarding. Draw your card for turn, play it, plus Liliana, just continually chip away at any chance of your opponent mounting any type of uh, campaign using cards from hand. And Leyline of the Void opening up here is going to shut off some of these shenanigans and make sure that that Knight of the Reliquary never really gets out of hand. Wasteland taking out a Cloud Post. Mox Diamond, and now Dark Confidant. So Graveyard not going to be part of the winning strategy here. Assassin's Trophy. And that could be used to turn the Graveyard back on. Is that going to be worth it here, though? You're off to a pretty reasonable start. Knight of the Reliquary. Glimmer Post. Sorcerer Spyglass showing Swords, Vindicate, and that Assassin's Trophy. Three pieces of spot removal. And now Abrupt Decay joins in as well. The more spot removal he gets, the more tempting it'll be to take out this Ley Line. Eventually get some extra cards into the graveyard, set a bit more of a clock. Really resist that temptation and just try and close this out in five or six turns with these creatures, perhaps adding another creature or two. Happy to pass with a bunch of options in hand. Mana base, it looks like only one of them would be able to be played. Last zone only providing colorless mana. And it looks like Vindicate and a Wasteland. Wasteland not being used. Very interesting. I would have expected that to be used earlier. Perhaps that's what Sorcerer Spyglass is naming. I had to imagine that is the case. That Wasteland would have been very nice. Crippling Brian's mana base here. Not looking like he's going to be able to go over the top currently. But a Cloud Post or two could really change that in a hurry. And there we go. Unlocked is that Wasteland. Abrupt Decay taking out the Spyglass. Andrew far enough ahead that he is completely comfortable with that two-for-one trade so to speak. And now another Wasteland. Found with Knight of the Reliquary. Bayou going to be able to add to Andrew's mana base if he doesn't have a better land. Assassin's Trophy, 
taking out that Eldrazi Temple. And Brian taking a look, grabbing a Waste. He does have basic lands in the form of Waste. If he has any additional copies. Uh, Andrew draws any more Assassin's Trophies. Decides to test out Brian's deck building. Oh, and there we go. It looks like a second one actually does hit that Vesuva. I have Ugin now, making Brian's Eldrazi cost two less. Another Dark Confidant. His pedal to the metal here, Andrew. Ready to flip a couple of cards for Dark Confidant, but no need as Brian scoops it up here to get into game number three. Time not likely to be a factor, but Brian not looking to risk it. Taking a look at that sideboard. Some options like Thorn of Amethyst, and it looks like he's going to stay pat with his current sideboarding plan. So game one, Brian way over the top, mashing with Eldrazi, locking down that mana base with Karn. Andrew on the play, going back. Game two, able to get way out ahead with Dark Confidant. Hobble Brian's mana base, keeping uh, any creatures at bay uh, with all of the spot removal in his hand. Brian never even committing creatures to the board that game. I don't believe. Now, how will this go for Brian on the play? He doesn't really have the knockout blow uh, that Eldrazi Post is used to having, uh, which is the early chalice versus much of the format. Uh, instead, he settles for opening on Leyline of the Void and gaining a life off of Glimmer Post. Mox Diamond for Andrew, a little bit of acceleration. Bayou and Dark Confidant, so ditching some card advantage, looking to recoup it immediately, and now Matter Reshaper for Brian. Andrew curving out beautifully here. He's got the Dark Confidant draw engine going. He wastelands, and he <laughs> thinks for a moment about swinging with that Dark Confidant. Far too valuable to throw into a Matter Reshaper. Brian. Considering whether or not to swing, he does, in fact, turn that Matter Reshaper sideways. And now Punishing Fire, a card that Andrew thought about how many he wanted in there post-board. Looks like he has found a copy when it will actually be useful. That will be able to take out Matter Reshaper if he elects to go that route. Another option here is Jamming Liliana for an Edict effect. What road does he decide to take? Having Liliana on board does feel a little better, but it does also feel like a little bit of a waste of those loyalty counters to clear a creature that you could so easily clear with the Punishing Fire. He's going to go ahead and do it. Blessing Liliana. That gets an all is dust. Karn from Dominaria. Zion of Urza, I believe. Is this Karn creating a construct? And Liliana getting hit down to just one loyalty Cabal Pit. Not going to be very good this game with that ley line in play. Would have been very welcome otherwise if uh, Andrew did have threshold. The ability to kill both of these creatures would have been very, very solid. Of course, Matter Shaper can replace itself pretty easily. Punishing Fire takes out that construct. Karn down to one. 
Andrew has to decide whether or not he wants to, plus Liliana. Brian with perhaps just one card in hand. <laughs> you gotta feel like that's the right play. And it is a... Knight of the Reliquary and a Thought Not Seer going to the bin. Brian Hellbent versus Liliana, but she won't be around for long. Grim Monolith. Brian's next turn. A lot of threatening possibilities. Mattery Shaper staying home? Try and protect this Urza. I am daring Andrew to use Liliana here. Go ahead and edict. My Mattery Shaper. Swing in with Dark Confidant. Whatever is on top. Oh, and it's only a land, so it looks like this line's going to actually be fine. Top of the deck is going to be the determining factor here. Brian, with an incredibly large mana base. This Karn now a very real threat. Being able to dig towards some disastrous plays for Andrew. Five mana Nissa. We have a greatly accelerated clock here. All is dust off the top. Getting rid of some colored permanents. I believe Nissa creates, uh, turns the land into a green creature. Go ahead and check on that. Hmm. But three plus one plus, if that was Nissa who shakes the world, doesn't say that it gives it a color, so I don't believe All His Dust would have removed it. Yeah, I think we may have, have an improper board state here with that All His Dust was not as much of a saving grace as it appeared. Uh, Ensnaring Bridge now gets abrupt decayed. Looked like it was going to create a little bit of protection. Figuring out what the uh, proper graveyard and exile situation is. Cycling Baron more, trying to build this Knight of the Reliquary up a little bit. Arn versus Lily. Arn's going to go ahead and animate that Mox Diamond. A zero zero creature.
Head of the Reliquary now clearing Karn, Lily ticking up. Andrew ditching Wasteland over the card in hand. Perhaps about to see what that card is and what made it better than Wasteland. And that's a Knight of the Reliquary. So not only does Andrew add to the board, but that Wasteland discarded, making both of his Knights bigger. And off the top looks like Kozilek. Ryan tapping his mana. When you cast Kozilek, if you have fewer than seven cards in your hand, draw cards equal to the difference. So quite the top deck here at 10 mana. Going to have a 12-12 with Menace, which would one-shot this game. He's going to need some other creatures to survive this Edict. And now this is a game. A lot of possibilities here. Reality Smasher and Kozilek. These Knight of the Reliquaries, just 4-4s four by comparison. Liliana Edicting. Reality Smasher into the graveyard. Swords to Plowshares. Taking care of Kozilek. Gaining 12 life. And 8 of that life being given right back as these Knight of the Reliquaries turn sideways. Cloud post. Brian with an embarrassing amount of mana. What can he do with it? Sorceress, Sorceress Spyglass can potentially shut off either Lily or Knight of the Reliquary. He has some options here. Looks like a Thought Knot Seer, perhaps two in hand. Leyline of the Void being cast. Sorceress Spyglass. That's going to shut off Liliana. And now Thought Not Seer grabbing another Knight of the Reliquary. Andrew now Hellbent. Doesn't quite have thresholds. Looks like five cards in the graveyard. Ooh, and he's thinking this through. Swinging. Now Dark Confidant being cast. Interesting. Seems like there could have been a play to keep his knight alive. Using Knight of the Reliquary. Arn gonna take a wish. Does he have 16 mana? Walking Ballista could be lethal. And it looks like a Worm Coil Engine. The Worm Coil coming down. Liliana being revealed. And do a couple of... Tricks here with Knight, potentially. 
Liliana still shut off with that sorceress spyglass. And now walking ballista being fetched. And that is going to do it. Walking Ballista comes down after an absolute grind of a game. Back and forth, both players throw in haymakers. And eventually, it is a gigantic Walking Ballista from Brian with uh, just an incredible amount of mana to finish out the game there in three. That is all for this one. But don't worry, there is a lot more. Uh, you can check out our older videos, and we're always putting out new videos from ELD's Time Vault Games in Bellingham, Massachusetts. If you want to help the channel, of course, you can like, subscribe, share, tap that notification bell so you can know uh, the next time our new videos come out. Thanks for watching.